You know, in the car business, we, you know, we get regulated by Department of Transport, by EPA, and a bunch of others. And, and there's regulatory agencies in every country. In space, we get regulated by FAA. So there's a role for regulators. That's very important. And I'm against overregulation for sure. But I think we better get on that with AI. There'll certainly be a lot of job disruption because what's going to happen is robots will be able to do everything better than us. I mean, all of us. This is really like the scariest problem to me because you've got companies that are racing, that they kind of have to race to build AI or they're going to be made uncompetitive. Essentially, if your competitor is racing to build AI and you don't, they will crush you. I mean, there's like something like 12% of jobs are transport. Transport will be one of the first things to go fully autonomous. But when I say everything, like the robots will be able to do everything are nothing. Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. In a way that car accidents, airplane crashes, faulty drugs were not. They were harmful to a set of individuals within society, of course, but they were not harmful to society as a whole. AI is a fundamental existential risk for human civilization. And I don't think people fully appreciate that. The first bit of advice would be to really play, pay close attention to the development of artificial intelligence. Um, I think this is, we need to just be very careful in uh, how we adopt artificial intelligence and to make sure that uh, researchers don't get carried away because uh, sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of what they're doing. Um, so I think it's important for public safety that we, you know, governments keep a close eye on artificial intelligence and make sure that it does not represent a, a danger to the public. There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. Okay. Um, that, that's simply the, the and I want to be clear that these these are not uh, things that I think that I wish would happen. These are things, simply things that I think probably will happen. Um, and since, and if, they, if, if, if my assessment is correct and they probably will happen, then we need to say, what are we going to do about it? The, the harder challenge, much harder challenge, is how do people then have meaning? Like a lot of people, they derive their meaning from their employment. So if you don't have, if, if you're not needed, if there's not a need for your labor, how do you, how, what's the meaning? Do you, do you have meaning? Do you feel useless? These are much, that's a much harder problem to deal with. The biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, in general, we are all much smarter than we think we are, but much less smart dumber than we think we are, um, by a lot. So th this, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. Um, I'm really quite close to, I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows. And the rate of improvement is exponential. The, the, we'll see this also with, uh, with self-driving. Uh, I think probably by end of next year, self-driving will, will encompass essentially all modes of driving and be at least 100 to 200 um, percent safer than a person by the end of next year. We're talking like maybe 18 months from now. Um, uh, NHTSA did a study on, on Tesla's autopilot version 1, which is relatively primitive, and found that it was a 45 percent reduction in highway accidents. And that's despite autopilot 1 being just version 1. Um, version 2, I think, will be at least two or three times better. That's the current version that's running right now. Um, so the, the rate of improvement is really dramatic. Uh, we have to figure out some way to ensure that the advent of digital superintelligence is one which is symbiotic with humanity. I think that's 
the single biggest existential crisis that we face and the, and the most pressing one. I, I'm not normally an advocate of regulation and oversight. I, I mean, I think it, one should generally err on the side of minimizing those things. But this is a case where you have a very serious danger to the public. And so therefore, there needs to be a public body that um, has insight and then oversight on to confirm that everyone is uh, developing AI safely. Um, this is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. I'm not really all that worried about the short-term stuff. Things that are, um, not, like narrow AI is not a species level risk. Um, it, 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 will, it will result in dislocation, uh, in lost jobs and, um, it, you know, the, the sort of better weaponry and that kind of thing. But it is not a fundamental species level risk, uh, whereas uh, digital superintelligence is. Uh, so it's really all about laying the groundwork to make sure that if, if humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, then we should do so very, very carefully. Um, very, very carefully. Um, this is the most important thing that we could possibly do. And that AI risk is, that <laughs> I guess it's the sort of a benign AI and that we're able to achieve a symbiosis with that AI. Um, ideally the AI there's somebody who, I can't remember his name, but had a good suggestion for what the um, optimization of the AI should be, what's its utility function. Um, you have to be careful about this because if you say maximize happiness and the AI concludes that happiness is a function of dopamine and serotonin, so it captures all humans and jacks your brain with large amounts of dopamine and serotonin. <laughs> like, okay, it's not what we meant. <laughs> it sounds pretty good though. <laughs> oh, you'll love it. <laughs> Um, well, I like the definition of like, the AI should try to maximize the freedom of action of, of humanity. Um, maximize the freedom of action. Maximize freedom, essentially. Um, I like that definition. Um, but we, we do want a close coupling between collective human intelligence and digital intelligence. Um, uh, Neuralink is trying to help in that regard by um, creating a, an interface between um, a high bandwidth interface between AI and your and human brain. Um, yeah, we're already we're already a, a cyborg in the sense that, uh, that your phone and your computer are kind of an extension of you. Um, just low bandwidth input output. Right? Exactly, it's just low bandwidth, um, particularly output. I mean, two thumbs basically. Um, so how do we solve that problem? The, the band, bandwidth thing? The bandwidth issue. <laughs> I mean, well, we've, all, we've all succumbed to it now. We're all, we're all cyborgs. We're just low efficiency cyborgs. So how do, we, how do we make it better? I think we've got to build a... We've got to build an interface. Um, like we didn't evolve to have a communications jack. Um, you know, or some, so there's got to be essentially vast numbers of, of, of tiny electrodes uh, that are able to read write from your brain. Of course, you know, security is pretty important in the situation, to say the least. Um, I was going to say, I'm not coming with, I'm keeping my brain air gapped. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people will choose to do that. Um, but um, it's a bit like Ian Banks' Neural Lace. Mm -hmm. But not, but in the case of neural lace, it's sort of that, that's there from when you're born, or it, it's sort of it's not a, it's, it's more a of a backup. Sorry, it's a backup. Yeah, kind of a backup. Um, this would be there's there's a digital extension of you uh, that is an AI, the AI extension of you, uh, a tertiary layer 
of intelligence. Um, so you've got your limbic system, your cortex, and, and the tertiary layer, which is the digital AI extension of you, and that high bandwidth connection is what um, achieves a tight symbiosis. I, I think that's the best outcome. I, I hope so. If anybody's got better ideas, I'd love to hear it. We're rapidly headed towards digital superintelligence that far exceeds any human. I think it's very obvious. The robots going down the streets, they're like, what are you talking about? Man, we want to make sure we don't have killer robots going down the street. Once they're going down the street, it is too late.